Absolutely. GMB Gunner speaks for itself, so I don't, I don't even Gunner man. What's up, y'all? How y'all doing? This GMB Gunner man, and this is my golden hour. Bang! You're a great guy, all the way from Cleveland. And what's up, y'all? How y'all doing? GMB Gunner man. No, nah, I ain't gonna say how y'all doing. <laughs> Everyone fucks it up. Y'all know what it is, GMB Gunner man. That was my golden hour with my man Connor. Before we start, I just want to thank our guests for allowing me to push the, the start time back a little bit, bro. I'm trying to get better at the scheduling. It's my fault. Good, good, You're a great bro. guy. You're a great guy. For sure. You already know. And so, for those who don't know, this man to my right has been sending me eye emojis for like a month. Bro, yeah. it, it, I've texted you back. I'm like, yo, let's lock one in. I know. <laughs> it's just, don't it's, respond. It's, it's just busy. Oh, yeah, you guys are busy. So, so I have GMB Gunner Man to the right of me. Gunner Gunner. What's going on, y'all? And don't yeah, forget the man. Yeah, don't forget the man and the gunner. Uh, wait, wait, don't do that. So how long have you guys lived in the city in the city? I've been here ever since. Uh, for those who don't know, my brother is Terry Rozier for the Boston Celtics. Blood Brothers, correct? Yeah, Word. number 12. Uh, I've been here ever since you got drafted. Which is 16, 17? Um, four years. I don't know the four from, years. From Cleveland from originally? From Cleveland. Went from Cleveland to Louisville to Boston. So you've been traveling with your brother the... Basically the whole entire time. It's a crazy life, man. It's crazy, you've probably bro. Probably seen nut shit. I've seen it all. <laughs> yeah. That's why I, I feel like... I don't know. Like, I've seen... I've seen everybody. Well, well... When you lived in Cleveland, was it Cleveland the city, or were you right around Cleveland? I lived in Cleveland, Shaker Heights to be specific. That's a neighborhood. It's, yeah, it's a neighborhood. It's about you no know, like three miles outside of Cleveland. Not even. How far is that from Akron? About forty-five minutes. Where? Akron is like Brockton to Boston. Damn, Boston dudes aren't gonna like hearing that, yeah, bro. I know. You, you know Brockton's like glowing up right now, right? Yeah. But I mean, that's how yeah, the beef yeah, yeah. is between Akron and Cleveland. Oh, so, the, like, so so there is a beef. Yeah, kind of. Really a beef, but it's like, you know, how nowadays if you go to Cleveland, you'd be like, oh, yeah, this is where LeBron from. Somebody in Cleveland would be like, he's not from here. He's from Akron. Yeah. Like, yeah he plays like here that. in Cleveland. It's like that. But it's <laughs> like if someone like me from Boston, I'd be like, yeah, LeBron's from Cleveland. Yeah, exactly. But, like, but they call him the kid from Ak Akron. Akron. Right? They call him the kid from Akron. He wants that to be known that he's the kid from Akron because he's not from Cleveland. So you would rep. <laughs> Shaker Heights, or would you rep nah, Cleveland? Nah, I rep Cleveland. Of I lived in Shaker Heights, but I'm, I was all over Cleveland. Do, oh, you'd bounce around a bunch growing up? I was all, everywhere in Cleveland. So, so when you're like, so are you an older brother or younger? Younger. So you're like how old when you first move out of um, Cleveland? Cleveland was, let's see, um, I want to say 18. He went to Louisville. He went to Louisville, and I was sneaking in his dorm room. I didn't even go to college. Fire, though, right? I was just in his dorm room. He would go to every game. I was mobbing around Mad on Mad shorties you know on campus. I was mobbing around on campus, doing what I had to do to survive, like making a little change, doing this, got my hustle on. I see him when College got, camp is a great place to hustle, yeah, bro. college campus is crazy, bro. And it's like I got the whole college experience. Like nobody can ever tell And you'd me. have to pay for it, too, which is fresh. Not a dime, bro. I made money off of college. How about that? I'm sure, bro. Well, and Louisville's a big-ass campus, too, right? Yeah, Louisville is big. You know, they have no NBA teams in, that, in the state of Kentucky. Yes, yeah, Louisville and it's UK, UK, right? So it's either you, whichever well, side. So wherever he went, like, he couldn't even go anywhere without somebody being like, oh, my God. Well, so then it got, probably got to a point on campus where like, you're, like, totally well-known, too, bro. Exactly. That, was, that must have been dope, though. And that was that's what made it cool, but it was like, I was well known, 
and I didn't even have to use his name. It was just because I was everywhere, yeah, yeah. right, the right spot, right time. And then when they, when everybody start connecting everything, it's like, oh yeah, that's his brother. Like, oh shit, they some cool ass dudes. Like, so so were there a bunch of before they had known? Were there a bunch of people who thought that you went to school there? Hell yeah, the first day, <laughs> the first day of school. Look, I promise you, I got a picture on my phone. I'll show you after this. The first day of school, his first day of school. I went like it was my first day of school. I had a book bag on. I walked. <laughs> you walked went to classes? Him. No, I just walked with him to his first class. It was like across the train tracks. Then I linked up with one of his teammates who didn't have a class right when he went Yeah, that sounds mad fun, though. It was just, like, cool. Like, I was just on the campus. Like So would you be hitting the dining hall, too? Legit. I was in the cafeteria. <laughs> That's like, crazy. I had, I had, like, I legit have friends that either, that I got friends that still there doing uh, grad school and stuff in a little bit. I'm sure, like, yeah. I have friends, like, when bro is busy, like, I'm occupied. Like, yo, where you at? The cafe? I'm on my way. Chick-fil-A? Like, you have yeah. boys over there already. I have, every, I have people, like, boys, girls. <laughs> Shorties. Family, family, like. And, like, and how long? Yo, you want to, yo, I want you to come up here. Introduce yourself. Give me IG, bro. Jiggy, Jiggy. Big Jiggy. We just met. It's Jiggy here. What's up, boy? What's up? Well, give me IG, bro. IG. What's your IG, bro? <clears throat> Jiggy underscore three. Oh, you don't have a GMB tag yet? He said, no. he said Jiggy <laughs> underscore three. He said you don't have a GMB tag yet. <laughs> Wait, what does GMB stand for? Get more blessings. I like that. That's fresh. Get more blessings. So h- how far geographically is, is uh, Ohio from Kentucky? Like, is that a, that's a drive or you got to fly? Five hours drive. Okay, so you would... Would you go back and forth when you were All the there? time. I'm sure. Bro, all the time, bro. I didn't call it the Greyhound. It got oh, the, times the where bus? I would, yeah, I would catch the bus from Cleveland to Louisville. I did that trip probably about 15, 20 times. I drove. We, me and and the five hours didn't seem that long, right? Five hours didn't seem that long because from Cleveland to Cincinnati, and people kind of always do that, Cleveland to Cincinnati, that's four hours. What's that, northern Ohio to southern Ohio? Yeah, we're northern Ohio, southern Ohio, Cincinnati. Take that four hour drive, and then once you get to Cincinnati, people will just realize, like, oh shit, Louisville is only 45 oh, okay. minutes away. Oh, from so you Cincinnati. pass through Cincinnati to get to the thing? You have to. And so, did you have wheels on campus, or you were just popping on the bus? Yeah, no, nah, we had wheels on campus. Word. Scooters, mopeds. You didn't take the moped like, five hours, though, did nah, you? Heck no, heck no. No, no, yeah, we drove, we drove, but didn't drive, it was on a bus. So, what would you do when the basketball team would travel? Would you just travel? I'll be chilling. I'd chill at the dorms, low key. <laughs> That's, you know, that'd be fun as fuck, though, bro. I'd be chilling, bro. Like, like I said, he can be gone all week, and I'll be I'd occupied. Be, yeah. And I'd have, I'd text him, like, yo, what's up, bro? Good game, this, that. Like, I'm good. You good? Like, Word. Move around campus. I know how to, I know how to adjust any territory. I'm straight. I know. It's so I can imagine. So you've been bouncing around now for, like, how long? Six years, I mean. Yeah, probably like six, seven, eight years. But you've been in Boston for four years now, so like, feel, it feels four. like kind of a home, right? Yeah, kind of, sort of. It's it's different. It's like every day, it's just, I'm learning more and more about Boston. Like, the city. Uh, probably coming here, you learn a lot, too, The right? city, the people, the culture, everything. Like, it's so different. Like Than Ohio? So different, bro. Like, what, the people or, like, you're talking about the... Just, just the everything moves. The people, the how, like how the houses are set up, the freeway how it's set up. You guys got a pike, like you know, it's just just everything different. Is uh, do you think the you think people are like less friendly? I feel like people. One one thing that people adjust to a lot when they come here is like people are here in, are in a rush always. Yeah, that's one thing about Boston. They drive crazy. <laughs> yeah, they drive like psychos. Yo, they drive like you know like. Nobody else is on the road. That's confusing, but... You're talking about, like, downtown? Downtown, it's chaotic, but if you're on the highway, you can. there's some psychotic drivers. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Everywhere. Like, yeah. you can't even just say downtown got, in the city, like, you everywhere gotta, in Boston. Yeah, you got to be defensive like, as hell on the roads, right? You have to be defensive. You have to. Like, it's, it's the only way to go about it, be a defensive driver out here. So, did, did when you were at Louisville, you started music there? No, I started music way back, bro. I used to, I played the drums for my church ever since I grown up. Mad people keep saying they all started in their church. I played, 
I'm one of those people that you can ask anybody, anybody of my friends, family, anybody, they would tell you I used to, I would be at church every Sunday. I'd be at church four days out of seven days out of the week. So you still go when to church was, four days? No. Nah, 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 <laughs> Hell no. Nah. That's how I grew up. It was like, I grew up in the church around all instruments. Like mm-hmm. I play, start off playing the drums. I start playing the piano. Then I Probably singing out. too, right? Yeah, that too, just a little bit. I never sang in a choir, like, my older days. When I was younger, of course, you know, everybody kind of forced. Mm -hmm. Not really forced, but, you know. But it's been... It's been that long, and I just, like, that little time at church, I, like, I I found my gift. You started to pick it up. I found my gift, and it was music. Like, I love music, bro. Mm -hmm. I, I, I used to... I used to just listen. It's a st- radio station back in Cleveland called 1073 The Wave. That's it's like JM like, 94.5 here? Nah, it's like whatever you guys jazz station is. No clue, bro. Yeah, it's whatever you guys jazz oh, station is. Oh, so you'd be is. on the jazz early? Like they say, um, the quiet storm. Like that shit. Oh, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I used to listen to when I was a kid. Like, Word. It was all of that. And it was just like. I just used to love music. Used to love the sound of a saxophone. Used to love like you know just melodies. And Do you ever everything. try to work that into your production now? All the time. Yeah. Every time, bro. Every time. Every single time. If you're a musically intelligent, if you're musically intelligent, and you know like your music, and you listen to some of my songs, you'll be like, "Yo, that was it." Like that was it. So do you, do you make your own beats? No, I don't. I wish I knew how. Well, if you play drums, I'm sure you could probably pick yeah, it up. I can do it. it. Like, if I wish I, can, I wish I can sit down with a producer and just go through. I never even did that yet. Bro, you could definitely get one of these two here to teach you. Hell yeah, but I just never, I never went. I'm I'm not, I'm not there yet. I'm working. It's some more to come. I think one thing I'm picking up on, like, a lot of people who come through here, like, once they learn how to make their own beats, it's like, you don't really have to go anywhere to do it. Like, you could just do it from the crib. You do that shit right here. You wake up. Just go. But there's something about coming to this. I don't know. How long have you been coming here for? <coughs> not even not even three months. Not even six months. Oh, dead ass? Dead ass. So where were you recording before? <coughs> I was recording in uh, Everett. And before there, I was recording my third floor at the house here in Boston. Word. And, and you'd have uh, producers coming to the crib type thing? Yeah, I have an engineer. Shout out Engineer Eilis. I have him come up, pull up. Engineer J to DJ. Pull up to the house, record me. So how did you hear about the studio? I heard about this studio. I'm doing free marketing for the stew. Yeah, yeah <laughs> so. I heard about... How did I hear about the studio or how did I hear about John? Because it's two different uh, yeah, things. Yeah, it's two different things for it's, sure. It's definitely two different things. I'm going to just say, I heard about the studio, boom. I never heard about the studio, to be honest with you. Um, but you knew John was that guy. I knew John was that guy. I didn't know where John was located. Everybody's been hitting me like, yo, your sound is crazy. Go see John. Like, that's who you need in the city. Like, oh, you in Boston? You doing this? You not working with John? Like, you in the studio every day. You haven't been in the studio. I'm like, who is John? Like, who is John? Yada, yada. Mysterious character. Yeah, mysterious character. I know, I was thinking, sorry to interrupt you, but I was like, damn, this is like the first time this dude's actually ever been on camera when we had him come up. Yeah, so it was like, it was like, you know, months, weeks, whatever went on. I'm doing my thing, still recording in my studio in Everett or at home. Um, Recently when Young Thug was just on tour with J. Cole, uh, me and YSL Duke, we have a lot of songs together, probably like six or seven songs together already before he even came. He came in town. Duke hit me up, said, yo, I'm pulling up to the studio. You know I'm in Boston. I need you. Come on, pull up. Let's do it. Let's lock in. I'm like, all right, bet. He pulled up to the house. Like, come on, let's do it. Are you talking about the home studio? Yeah, he pulled up to the house at first. Okay. But, I mean, we I didn't have a home studio up and running. This was just like two months ago when okay. they were just here. He just pulled up to the house just to say what's up and pick me up and go to the studio. And we pulled up here. This was our studio session. I'd never been here. Like, no. Oh, so he set up the studio he session. He set up the studio session. I guess him and his label set up the studio session. Mm-hmm. And I just pulled up. You know, it was my first time coming. Smelled, smelled great in here. <laughs> I'm like, welcome home. I'm like, yo, like, why have I never heard of this spot? And then when I get in the room, when I get in the A room, I, I know I've did my research on John because I'm like, man, I need to find out who this John guy is. Mm-hmm. 
I like over the months and shit. Like I found this IG, I so I know who he looks like. Yeah. So I get in the studio, boom. I just white guy, long hair, sitting behind him with a brace on his yeah, wrist. With the brace on his wrist. And this is what I bet he was. Tapping, I bet he was like, this. He was like foot, "What's up?" Tapping his foot to the beat. Nah, like he was. It was something <laughs> playing. He's tapping his foot to the beat. Like I'm like, that's John. Like yeah. I, I just, I just, it just clicked in my head. I'm like, all right, that's John. And like, turn around, say, "What's up?" Like, dapped everybody up. And from there, like, I heard, I heard and saw what John was doing. Like, I'm so into production engineers and production part like i might not know how to do it but i know what i can like tell what's going yeah, on yeah all the lines are like falling yeah, down I can the page tell what's right? going on like when when he pulls up a filter i can hear it like some people they be like yo what are you changing mm -hmm. like, i can hear it like i hear everything and i'm like yo that's so crazy and it's like when i heard him mixing as we were recording i was like yo he's really like the go <laughs> like my heart was beating i'm like trying i'm like I don't want to just sit here and like try to hurry up and introduce myself while he's recording him right now, but I'm gonna introduce yeah, myself yeah. at some at any given point. Like, yo, we gotta link in, we gotta lock in, do this, and so boom, studio session going on for hours and hours. This is this is with uh, with Duke. YSL Duke. In yeah, this too. Duke. Um, studio session goes on for hours, hours, and then uh, Duke takes a nap. <laughs> <laughs> I take advantage of that now, yo. I, I'm sitting there right next to John. I rolled me up one. This is a Hollywood story, bro. <laughs> bro, I'm telling you, it was like I sat there next to John. I rolled me up one. I was like, yo, can you play this beat for me? Boom, we played the beat. And uh, in-house producer Barrels came over with some beat. And he's like, yo, play this beat. And I'm like, yo, come on, I'm about to record this. And then I recorded it. And then John started nodding his head, and I started nodding my head. And it was just like some smooth melodic shit. And from there, I was just like, yo, John, you the GOAT, bro. Like, <laughs> That's exactly how I'm hearing it in my head. He was like, just wait. Wait until I do this. Put the sauce on it. Smack. <laughs> Man, then he did that. I was like, yo. What, what, was that song, did that song come out, the one you were working on? No. No, the song still doesn't come out. It's one of the, like. It's in the vault. Yeah, it's in the vault. It's one of those golden songs. It's coming So Did he do two sides? No, he did not. Bro, that's my favorite song. Did he ask. did not do two sides. And, and no shade to Young Thug, bro, but I like the original. Yeah, but wait. So, because when you shot the video, that's the first time I linked. When I linked with you in the studio, mm -hmm. I saw the Zandros visual, mm -hmm. with all the colors behind you. Like the shit mm -hmm. was so clean. Yeah. Where do Where do you find the original? Because it cuts off. It's like a two part video. Mm -hmm. Is that out or is zero just like not? Nah, the out. The original two sides. Yeah. That part. That part is just the beginning of the song. I know. So where's the Where's the full song? Oh, oh, two sides is the the start of can't hold two me down. Two sides is the start of can't hold me down. Oh, so it's like a two part song. Yeah, I only played like half of my verse until right when the video came on. Yeah, just so, to tease it, just to tease the two side song, so people be like, "Yo, what song is that? What song is that?" So, but that original without the feature is not out. The original without the feature is not out. I'm trying to hear that, bro. This shit. It was only one verse. It was only my first verse. I oh, okay. Have, I didn't have a second verse on there. Yeah, that song was open. I was like, yo, I need a dope-ass feature for this. Yeah, bro. To be honest, like, you, you kind of got to... So, mind you, probably every rapper in the city, is, like, watches this. Yeah. How the fuck were you able to finesse some shit like that? Because you know how many people want a song with Young Thug, bro? Like, <laughs> uh, I, To be totally honest with everybody in the whole universe, that was a blessing. Like, I don't know how that happened. I was at home, sleep in bed. My brother calls me and said, yo... I'm headed to the studio with Young Thug. Pull up, drops a pin. I'm like this, like. Uh, you're he's somewhere else. You're he's, here. No, he's here. He went out. This is when Young Thug was on tour with J Cole. Oh, he didn't. He didn't come to the studio here. No. Damn. Don't tell John. I know, right? <laughs> so when Young Thug was with J Cole, they opened up whatever. You know, Young Thug had a studio session right after their show. Mm -hmm. I didn't go to the show or I didn't go out to the club afterwards. I was at home. I, don't say I wasn't feeling good, but I was just at just home chilling. chilling. Just chilling. In the bed, sleep, bro calls. Like, yo, I'm going to the studio with Young Thug. Pull mm -hmm. up, drops the pen. <laughs> I'm on my way. Like, whatever I just threw on, I'm on my way. Yeah, it's like. It's Young Thug. Like, I wasn't hearing anything. I told the whole house, I'm like, I'm I'll out. I'll be there. See ya. I'm out. Boom. Got there in 10 minutes. Um,. And, and you were fuck, you were pumped, like. But people, love I was pumped, but it was like you know I was just I was just more so excited just to see his 
just to see how he worked. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a fan. He's a, yeah, he's like a legend. He's a legend. I'm a fan of music. And I just, not to say I wanted to see the sauce, but I wanted to see how, how he moved and shit. How, yeah. how he moved in the studio. Like, I know how I move. But I wanted to see how somebody on that higher level, you know what I'm saying? Like what, the highest level, bro. Basically, and see, I wanted to see what their procedure was about chopping down a song how would you boom 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 like mm -hmm. what was your process of doing it and man he blessed blessed me bro like i walked in introduced myself i didn't even introduce myself i got introduced duke was like brother like mm -hmm. walked up to thug was like bro like the gmb gunner man so i've been working with every time i come in boston it's terry rose your brother he's like what's up how you doing boom load something up uh and i played are, are, are you nervous a little anxious I was anxious. I was like, yo, when I play him this shit, like, he gonna nod his head. Like, I was ready. Oh, like, oh yeah, been, so it's one of those moments again. Yeah, it's just one of those, yeah. It was just one of those moments, like, I wanted to be like, bro, listen to everything I got. Like, here, like, listen to this shit. Well, you know, there's there's a lot of artists that, like, they, they'd be, like, too anxious in a position like that. Like, I mean, I'm sure you have a sense of confidence where it's just like, yeah, yeah. like, like, this is what I can do. Like, just, yeah. like, here it is. Yeah. It's kind of what it was like. It's kind of, I would say my confidence went, was like, my confidence level on my for my music is like, I don't know. I'm one of those people that be like, bro, I can play my shit wherever, whoever. That's a however. blessing too. Yeah, like, when when my mom and them tell me that they love my music, that's when I know. When You're my doing mom, right, yeah. yeah, my mom, and then it goes from as old as my mom, no shots, but it's as old as my mom, and then from as low as to my nephews and little cousins who like, five and six when they starting like when mm -hmm. i know that both of them know the same words to the song i'm like yo there's no way yo there's always two sides it's always <laughs> two sides so it's like i don't know so i played i played the can't hold me down it was the first song i played them mm -hmm. and, and and for reference that's the in the xandros video that's the second yeah, part that's the second part it's basically the main part of the video i played that song for him uh, I only played the first verse and then I cut it off and he was like that's the one right there he was like you gotta drop that one right there he told me he was like, you gotta <gasps> drop that one right there and my heart was like damn like damn young thug just told me that's the one I gotta drop it and then I was like listen to this one boom play two sides and he was like load that one up that's all he said he was like load that one up pumped you fucking you pumped it's only like four people in the studio at the time everybody else is like on the outs outside glass doors and shit what is this over the summer was this over the summer nah i wouldn't say it was over the summer it was like summer fall september october yeah september or... october yeah i say october mm -hmm. um and then yeah like had to be going and it was legit like this like you the engineer and here's thug and here's the mic i'm standing right here next to thug and he's just like it's always it's always he went through his shit and it blessed me <laughs> like dope so dope it. bro it was crazy once he got done he was like that's it he's like that's the one that's huge bro was like man it's a blessing so question because my before you got here like i was just mm -hmm. like kind of seeing how like an engineer moves and shit when he when he like was on the mic did his voice sound like yes it did yes because i know there's mad effects to, and shit to, to 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 dead all of those like how how he that's how he sounds mm -hmm. like i don't know how he does it it's, he's musically talented like there's always he two sides and he and he like i don't know you can just tell that he crafts that like, mm -hmm. he makes sure that that's on point he knows his sound, and that's what I learned from him. He knows to, how to get his sound on any song. So, question: I, mean, I haven't really asked you about like, you know, like your progression in terms of like mm -hmm. start to finish. But like, was that a validating moment for you where it's like, yo, fuck yes, like finally? Mm, I wouldn't say it was more of a validating moment. It's like I a say, spur of the moment type thing. I say it was a spark, like. When he did that, I was like, you, when he did that, you can ask John. I came to the studio. I didn't go to sleep that night. I came to the studio 8 o'clock in the morning. Some, I can't. I was the first. I want to say I was the first person in this studio right after I did that song with Thug. And remember, I told you I played him to Can't Hold Me Down. Mm -hmm. I only had one verse on that song. I came here the next day, like 
literally the next day and finished that song out. Literally the next day I did that video. The next day. Bam, bam, bam. Bro, legit. After I, like, this is no lie. The next day I did a video to Two Sides and Can't Hold Me Down and finished both of those songs. You're, within, you're fired within, up. Within yeah. two days. I was so amped, bro. I didn't get <laughs> any sleep. Like, bro, I'm. I'm everywhere. We had a little party downtown at the club. Like it was. <laughs> oh, that was where the that was the the club shots. Yeah, the Bijou. club shots. Was it Bijou? Bijou, exactly. Max O'Cream pulled up, and it was just like you know, like mm -hmm. I was. It was like I told you, it was a spark for me, and it was just like, whoa, like let's go, let's do it, let's keep going, like let's do it. That's one hell of a start, Young Thug on the feature. Absolutely, like, but one hell of a start. When, how long have you been like branding it as your career? You know what I'm saying? I would say for at least a solid year. Not even a full solid year, but I say a solid year. So you've been going what you're saying is like you're you you've upped your work ethic and like shit. For sure. My last tape was two twenty two last year and I'm aiming to drop it on two twenty two this year. I'm trying to make that my little ritual. Every two twenty two, February twenty second, you're gonna get a drop by Gunner Man, no matter what it is. Single, album, mixtape. Whatever, you, a commercial, something. You're going to get something from me on 222. It's, it's your birthday? Nah, it's just one of those, just we'll one of those numbers. Um, so when you start, like, your career, you know, it's Boston's interesting because, like, you have people, I'm sure, as you know, you've bounced around a bunch, but, like, the music market's not, like, really pop in here. You know what I'm saying? But can you, so. you can feel buzzing, right? For sure. Is, was it like this in Cleveland? Nah, I I don't. To be honest, I don't even Let's know. Turn this off real quick, my phone. To be honest, I don't really even know if half the people in Cleveland really know how into music I am as I am out here. I haven't really legit been in the studio. Like, you know, like you said, I've been out here for four years. Within the last two years, I've been taking musically music very serious mm -hmm. i've been in boston for the last two years so it's like i've been away from home only thing i can do is shoot messages over like here listen to this listen to this i'm not there to be like yo the face gonna, to face yeah. you know what i'm saying but i feel the love from cleveland i feel the love from everywhere but here in boston it's another level because it's a it's a different style it's a different people are their ears is is not glued to everything like their ears are not versatile mm -hmm. everybody's ears is it's not you know, it's like a Boston uptown. You know, that's what they. Oh, want. so you so you think there's a sound here? Definitely. Really? Definitely. Boston has its own sound, bro. Just like New York has their own sound. Well, I mean, you're also from out of town, so like yeah. maybe you recognize it, but I, you're probably one of the only people I've heard say that. Oh, Boston has their own sound for sure. You have Boston rappers. Feel me? You have Boston sound. That's people. a huge compliment. Yeah. No, for sure. Yeah. Boston has their own sound, like. What, what is rap like in Cleveland? Uh, rap in Cleveland is like um. You, you can take a look at that if you need it. Nah, I'm straight. Say DJ, I'll call him back. Um, where's Trippy Red from? He's from Ohio. He's from Ohio. I don't really know where he's from, but it's not. There's nowhere near Cleveland. I okay. can tell you that. Ohio's so, for people don't know. Ohio's a big fucking state. Yeah, Ohio's big. I'm from I'm from the home of Kid Cudi and, and MGK. Oh right, right, right. Kid Shaker Cudi. Heights. Shaker Heights. That's where I know I'm from, right? Yeah. Where? Yeah, that's where I'm from. That's 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 the goat to me. Who was the second one? Kid Cudi and who? MGK. Oh, and MGK. Where? Bone Thugs. Oh yeah. Yeah, all from Cleveland. And so is is the scene out there kind of like it is here? Is it disorganized? No. Yeah, it's very disorganized, but it's not like how it is out here. It's more so out there. It's more so group versus group. Like, you, you don't know. think it's like that here? Nah. Thanks, no. Well, I mean, that's just for me looking on the outside. It mm -hmm. might not be like that because I don't know. You know, you kind of roll alone. I kind of, yeah, I, yeah I'm, I'm rolling alone. And, like, you know, if you good at music, let's do it. Mm -hmm. Like, if you want to make a song, let's do it. I'm open. I've been making music with all Boston artists since I've been out here. So it's like, you know, I'm adjusted. It's, I know, and, like, you... You have, like, experience now where you've touched on mad shit. Like, you've like been I, different places, bro. You know? Different places. I didn't did different songs, different sounds. Like, that's why I can say that Boston has its own sound. Yeah. Like, I've done, like, five features with five Boston artists, and I can be like, they all look different, but they all have that. But you know your sound is, like, totally different than anything else coming up the city. Yeah. 
And that's my point. It, yo, I'm going to keep it a buck. I like actually, and this is going to sound really bad. There's not actually a whole lot of Boston music I listen to consistently, bro. But like, I, Chum is like my song, bro. I fuck with <laughs> yeah, it so heavy. It's Jiggy favorite, one of his favorite songs. I got my brother with me. Yeah, that's one of those. I was like, yo, I gotta drop this. this is, turn him up for the season. What was that recorded here? Uh, no, I recorded that back at home in Cleveland. Word. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's not like, I mean, you, I'm sure after you just dropped this huge song, it will be different. But like, mm-hmm. you touch back home now. People know you do music. Yeah, people uh, people know I do music right now. That's that's that's, that's where I'm at right now. Mm-hmm. People know I do music right now. They know I have a song with Young Thug right now. We'll take it. We'll take that. Hell they, yeah. They, that's that's what I'm saying. I'll take that right now. I'm waiting for the people to to to. I'm gonna hit them with something else. I'm not gonna tell y'all when, but I'm gonna hit the people with something else, and then that's when they are gonna take that little flashback and then go do their little research and go listen to all the mm-hmm. old shit I got. That's already out, but you gotta, you know, you gotta go find. It. I'll be honest, I'm not following. I, I, explain. Like I already dropped the album on. Yeah. iTunes. I got a mixtape on SoundCloud. Got oh, it. oh, you're saying you're gonna do something and people will notice you more, and then look at the old shit and be like, oh, exactly. he's been doing it type like, thing. He's been doing it. Okay, yeah. You know what I'm saying like you can, like basically you can check the check the, the history, stats, check the history, check the 2k and stats. You can just see the progress of my sound. You can see where it's going. You can see like my sound never changed up. It just got better. Mm-hmm. Like I never you probably get more comfortable though too, right? Yeah, I'm way more comfortable, bro. You can, you can tell like mm-hmm. this doing this right here. I man, last year I'd probably be in here like nervous. Like, bro, I'm way more comfortable. I'm ready. Like I'm ready for next level shit right now. How, how old are you? I'm 24. Okay, word. I'm 23. I think something like, I think you kind of learn like around like 22, 23, you just become progressively a little more confident. Would you agree? Yeah, for sure. Like I see it in everyone. Everyone's like, yo, this is just kind of who I am. Like yeah. no change for sure. me, man. For sure. It's like 22, 23, around that, around that time. It's like. It just starts getting competitive when yeah. you're our age too, though. Yeah, when you get that age, it's just that it's that time where you gotta let's go like, time. Make a name for yourself, mm-hmm. basically. It's like you gonna make a name for yourself, or you gonna sit back. So, do you think you're competitive? No, not at I, all. I was gonna say, you seem that passive, bro. No, nah, not a bad thing. It's just like you seem I'm like com- I'm, I'm competitive. I'm competitive if if it comes down to it, but. You know, like I'm so chill, bro. I don't have time to waste my energy mm-hmm. for all that negative energy or whatever type of energy you're trying to get me to do. Like, hell no. Focus on myself type yeah, thing. I'm, Damn, you yatted, bro. Nah. Oh, he got the Red Sox style on his hand? Let's go. Right, where'd you get that? I'm trying to get one. I'm going to get the L line of the deer on my trap. It's my uh, tattoo artist out in Cleveland. Shout out to Mike. You got a whole sleeve? Nah, I have. My phone come right here. Word. Big Boston. You, you have a Celtics one yet? No. Not yet. No. I don't think I'm gonna get a something. Yeah. Um. Make sure you tell everyone we're not done. Just make sure you tell everyone your Instagram, Twitter, where to find you, what's coming. You can find me on Instagram at gmb underscore g on Twitter gmb underscore underscore g. You can find me on SoundCloud, Spinrilla, YouTube. Spinrilla, I haven't heard that one in the grip. Spinrilla, yeah. It's I marketing, spin, hell yeah. I love Spinrilla. <laughs> Uh, my mixtapes, um, iTunes, Spotify, Deezer, Title, Deezer. Audio. Oh, you're at it, bro. You, know, you can find me on all those spots. Just type in GMB Gunner Man. Is that is that Distro Kid? Is that how you distribute? Yep. That's how I that's how I run through right now. I've been running through Distro Kid. What's you do, Distro Kid? <coughs> I run through Distro. Oh, oh, eight. Oh, yeah. Um, so do you guys all live in like a, a megaplex type shit? And if this is too invasive, you don't have to answer it. But like a megaplex, like you guys all live together, right? Yeah. Oh, where? I mean, it's not many. It's only like me and my brother. Oh, that's it. My little cousin. Well, there's a chef too, right? Yeah, my chef stays with us. I think he like just followed. I was like, yeah, damn, yeah, it'd be I dope him, to have a I fresh. Told him, I told him where I was going, and he was like, oh yeah, let me see, check it out. He's he, top he, ten right does now. Does he he hook it up on the daily? On the daily. Let's go. <laughs> oh, that's huge. Daily. He loves it. The food's He's dope. Like, Bro, when I say he loves it, like you love this, like yeah. I love music, mm-hmm. he loves, he loves Cooking. that, he loves that, like he loves to be like, like you know what I'm saying? This is make your day right here. This little play to make your day right here, and it definitely will. It change. He, he, ne- he never comes out with any trash food. That's always good. Nah, I never had anything trash for him, bro. 
to be a hundred thousand percent. Spence, chef, I know you gonna watch this. I never had no trash meals, <laughs> and that's just that's that's his shit. Designer meals, that's what he called it. Designer <laughs> meals. Designer meals. It's the wave right now. Does he make? Is it? Is he from Cleveland too? Yep. So is it Cleveland specific? Yep. What What's the food from Cleveland? Everything. Just like here. Corned beef sandwiches, Polish boys. I'm gonna have to look that up. Chicken fillies. Corned beef sandwiches. Yeah, corned beef. Sound kind of trash, yeah. bro. You ain't had a corned beef sandwich then. You probably had one of these little bodega corned beef sandwiches. Yeah, honestly. Yeah. Why, you think food out here is whack? Yeah. It is? a lot to you, bro. It's <laughs> trash. You, you don't like it either? It's too... Uh, it's I, whack? I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't say it's whack. No disrespect to Boston. It's just so... It's just so many different cultures out here. And it's so cultural. Mad Caribbean cultures. Caribbean, Chinese food, Italian food, uh, Guatemalan food. Like, you just got all different types of shit. And it's like... Sometimes I just want, like, you know... So you're shit from home. Yeah, chicken Philly. Uh, you, you ever get homesick? Yes, but no. Sometimes, I was going to say, you've been on a move tell, for so I long. I tell everybody at home, anytime I talk to one of my friends at home, I'll be like, yo, I wish I can bring home out here. Like, I wish everybody can just pull up out here. Like, y'all will love it out here. Smoke smoke weed out here. Like, that's really what they're doing out there is doing no, no. what I'm doing out here. Like, but it's legal. It's legal. They're trying to smoke, go to the studio, chill, go here, go there. Like, I'm like, yo, you can do all Celebrate. that Celebrate. You like the clubs downtown? Yeah, I like them better than Big better room. than back at home right now. Where do you normally go? Like Tremont? To yeah, yeah, Bijou. 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 Bijou is my number one of my guys over there. Icon. You ever go over there? Not really. Not really. Not so much. I mean, well, I'll pull a walk through, but nothing, nothing too much. Quick. So when you go out, it's normally like downtown, downtown. Yeah. For sure, she's the downtown, downtown. I'm, I'm rarely going out though. Yeah, me too, bro. Twice a month. That's it? Booze twice a month, that's it? Nah, I just say I go out yeah. twice a month. Do, do you always, are you always like smoking, drinking when you record? Or do you do it sober ever? Why are you smiling? <laughs> Why is he smiling over there? Because I don't know when the last time I've ever been sober doing a session or anything like that. I'm all, I, I got to get in my zone. Sometimes I tell people to get out. Like I tell everybody to get out, but the engineer... Or, like, I'll just stand in the booth and isolate myself and just listen to the music and smoke mm -hmm. just to get in the zone one time. Have you, have you ever had a night where it's like, yo, you got mad trash, you didn't even know it was coming, and then, like, you woke up with a hit? Yeah. <laughs> it's a blessing, bro. Definitely. I definitely, yeah, definitely. I don't, I'm not a fan of being drunk in the studio, though. Mm -hmm. Definitely not a fan just of that. Just buzzed? Just right. Me, me and my bro like to call it Freddy. Fritty? Yeah. What what's that mean? Fried and Liddy. <laughs> I like that. It's Fritty. Yeah. So we get real Fritty. And once you get to that Fritty level, you good. Loose. Yeah, you know, don't don't O D. Mm-hmm. Don't over don't overdose. Don't overdose on the liquor. No, you should try to finesse is hit up the dudes at the T D garden and be like, yo, get my songs on the pregame playlist. Um, I've I can. I just don't have a clean version yet of anything, so it's two, like two times that swears. Yeah, yeah. Does it? I'm I'm damn near swearing in every, every song. Every bar, not every bar, but I'm just saying every song it has something. Like, could you you could talk about guns and shit though, right? In the song and they play it. Yeah, I mean, if you were trying to refer to the Chum song, yeah, I I. I kind of like twisted it. I try to make it sound like like it's a basketball song. Yeah, hundred round up, drum. I pull up shooting like chum. Like mm -hmm. you no know, kids play Fortnite. They know what a hundred round drum is. <laughs> like, you, know, you guys play Fortnite at the crib? I just got off Fortnite before I got here. Like I haven't played in like four months. Is it crazy? Man, yo, go add me on Fortnite. GMB Gunner, come get some dubs with me. You get up on the Twitch. You ever do that? Nah, I don't do that shit. People make mad bread off I Twitch, know. bro. I'm not that good though. Yeah, but it's. I'm one of those people that you know. If you know Fortnite, I'm flying with a little balloon. I'm hopping the tree and I'm sniping you. That's about it. Running with my team. What What is a map, bro? When I stopped playing, it was uh, the asteroid had just hit like right in the middle, and and you yeah, could get those like space juices. Man, bro, that's old. That's wild, man. man. As you you're probably looking at Fortnite right now and be like, yo, what? The? <laughs> like, well, like a new guns, new everything, new everything, bro. I can you can play with people on Xbox. You can play with people on their phone, like. 
If you pulled out Fortnite on your phone and we had it on the TV right now, we can play against you. It's not the same though, right? Phone versus console. Oh, really? Yeah, they make it. It's like Pokemon Go, bro. It's not the same as like playing it on a Nintendo. I mean, yeah, it's not the same. It doesn't give you the same game feel, but if I'm looking on my game screen, like you moving the exact same as how I'm moving. Wow, bro, that game was huge. Like revolutionary. Yeah, sure. Everyone right. played it. You, did you play COD growing up? Never. I was a Halo fan. So when you were at Louisville, what were, what were the video games they were playing? Shit. It's been like FIFA, right? Man, I don't even know if I was playing video games at Louisville. I was so much on the move, like in and out. Shit was just the usual 2K. Gunner Man's a genius, bro. He he got the entire college experience for free. Yeah. That's yeah. dope. I was... Have you... Did you ever... Have you been to schools out here yet? No. I was going to say, they're probably way different than Louisville. Yeah, I mean, I can just tell that they're different just because the schools out here are like in the city. You feel me? Oh, it's like a big campus. Yeah, man, Louisville campus is like its own city. Mm -hmm. At least for like three or four miles, it's its own city. And you can walk those three and four miles and still, like, I can walk dorm to dorm just from, you know what I'm saying, end to end. I think at a certain point, was like, hopefully you you stay here for like a while, but at a certain point, like, you, you kind of came at the right time in terms of music that it's growing so much. Mm-hmm. It's just gonna be like interesting. It's like are people gonna people are gonna at a certain point start viewing you as like a strictly Boston artist. You know that, right? If you're here, it's like kind of inevitable. Um, I don't know. My sound's so different, bro. Mm-hmm. I just can't wait for the people to hear this shit that John got cooking up for me. Like it's there. Is it mixed? Nah, but it's oh, there. You, you threw it off to him. It's, it's all there. It's way way. How much how much different does the mix change the the Sonics? Like, is it a night a lot, and day? A lot, like <clears throat> just like. So I, for those who don't know, I'm sure most of you know, but like a mix is artist records raw vocals, right? Gets on a mic, whatever, cool, great, wonderful, and then he tosses it to an engineer like John, like computer geek type dude, mm-hmm. and he'll get on his computer and mix the vocals in with the beat. And put some effects on it and shit. Mm-mm. I got it right, right? Yep. And I'm not a rapper. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, I was watching John's episode, mm-hmm. right? He had that part where he said, you can have a million dollar studio. And it doesn't mean shit mm-hmm. if the guy back there doesn't know what he's doing. Mm-hmm. It's a clear example. So, it's night and day with the mix? It's night and day. And it's also, when I mean, you guys are probably on a level now because you work together so much. Like He mm-hmm. kind of knows what you want it to sound like and... Bro, it's like pause and no homo shit, but it's like I was meant to meet John. Like, like, <laughs> yeah, I feel you. Like, pause. Like, really? He's flipping. He's flipping out. <laughs> like really? No, like I, I was, I legit say this shit when I go Destiny. home. Destiny. When I'm listening to the songs and I'm with bro and we chilling, we riding in the car. I sometimes turn it, turn it down. And be like, bro, John, yo, know, engineer, crazy, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, Bro, that's, that's exactly how I want this shit to sound. Like, it's a blessing, bro. It, it, I feel bro, like man. artists are always looking for that. And it's like, I'm ready to I'm ready to give the people exactly what I've been hearing in my head for all this, for this long time. But it's like, it's like, nah, I'm gonna let y'all wait. Mm-hmm. Not I'm gonna let y'all wait, but I'm gonna build it up. When I tell y'all when that time comes, it's gonna be crazy. I'm excited for it, bro. Yeah, me too. So, do you guys go to the games frequently? Every game. Every home game I'm at. 41 games? Yep. Every game. Course out every game? Nah, not course out every game. Only Some sort of tickets. Certain occasions. Certain occasions. When you guys touch back for the Cavaliers game, is like crazy family reunion usually. Yeah, it's crazy. It's, man. Hundreds it's, of people. It's, it get to the point. Sometimes we uh, got to turn off your phone sometimes. It would be people that ask you for five tickets on game day like how am I gonna get that on game Mm -hmm. day you know we got like you know it's just crazy but it's all love like we have a nice little kick it family get together the night before the game family get together after the game you know it's all love love that yeah I feel like you gotta when's the next Cleveland Celtics game at Cleveland February 5th damn I was like yo you should drop the project on that day like pull both cities together can so the project's done completely except the mix i don't know because i 
every time I'm in the studio, bro, I just keep on thinking about adding more music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's, don't you don't want to make it too long, bro. I know, no, I'm just talking about adding more music to my list of like, all right, these are going in the project. Mm -hmm. I still haven't did the process of, of elimination. I probably got about 50 songs in this, these are going on the project. Word. I only want 12. Wait, if you, you think 12 is a lot? I feel like, bro. 12 I, is just right. You think so? Me. Cause I don't make my song. My songs aren't three minutes long. My songs is catchy in and out. Hit you, hit you where you need to hear it. Boom, catch a vibe, hear a verse, catch the vibe again. And I'm out. You know, two two twenty two is usually my ending point of That's every what you song. Like? Is that what two sides was? Two sides was. I want to say two forty something. Whoa, just around that. I know songs are getting shorter and shorter. That dude XXX would drop songs that were like a minute fifteen yeah, seconds. I know. But it's so crazy is just because I don't know. I think I I'm a Kid Cudi fan to the day I die, bro. And I've been listening to that man do almost everything. And it's like you know he, that, that's crazy, bro. Because his music is like so different than what you do, and it's like it's crazy how he he affected like every artist in the city like that. Bro, it's so like I know every song from that man. What it was the song? It was on Man on the Moon. Oh, my world. My world. This will, will be my yeah. world. That's what's hard. Told you so. so he's kind of like an icon. Man, what is he? Hell yeah, to me, that's the goat, bro. <laughs> like, did you did you like Kids See Ghost? Yeah, I did, but I'm more so. I'm more so so stuck and sold on the like the early shit. The early shit. Like one was, and two. Like one and two, man Mr. on the moon, Major. Uh, kid named Cuddy, his mixtape. Oh, the kid from Cleveland. Kid from Cleveland. Uh, the that new new dot dot yeah. dot dot. That's, that's hard to me, bro. Maui Wowie. Songs he got with Chip the Ripper, King Chip. You no, know, thank God I'm, I'm fresh. You know what I'm oh saying? yeah, like those. Are, there's like there's like a ship horn in that yeah, song. Like, not like, not Cuddy opened up his chip. Got a Kush pack shells and some Henny. We can sip. Yes, yeah, he bro, he's like swag as fuck. Man, so do the um, do dudes on the Celtics embrace your music? Have you have you tried to like give it to him yet or? No, nah, see, I'm not that type of person that would just be I, like. I feel like you wouldn't over market it like yeah, that. Yeah, I'm not that type of person that's like, you know, because I know the position that I'm in, and I know who I'm around. I know how like. It's so easy for somebody to just be like, man, he ain't work for that. Like, look who his brother is and look who mm -hmm. he around. Like, all he had to do was this. Like, you know, they probably gave him this or they, you know. It's nothing like that. Like, I want people to know, like, this straight music. Like, yeah, I didn't. Yeah, that's probably tough for you, bro. I didn't, I didn't, um, like, I didn't really push this, this two side song to a lot of people. I just put it on my, put it on my IG. You know, if you was recently in my DMs, I shot you the DM. My recent text message, shot you the text message. The next thing you know, I just watched it. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, repost Jason Tatum. Repost by my brother. Likes by everybody. Like, you know, just coming left and right. I'm like, yo. like, Let's right, go. Let's go. And it's like. It's also a big deal, bro, because people, you did it indirectly, but in terms of like Boston, mm -hmm. you know, like how much people want love from like the biggest artists out here, and they mm -hmm. don't get it. Like you really opened a gate. Yeah, and that's the thing. That's the that's bro. That's what I've been trying to do out here since day one. I've been trying to. That's why I, I love working with Boston artists. Mm -hmm. Like I don't care what anybody say. Boston artists are some of the hardest working artists out here, bro. Like mass artists. I can kind of say that too, because not every artist I work with is from, from Boston. The city, yeah. yeah, so mass artists. I salute y'all. Like y'all, y'all are on y'all shit. They try to be in the studio every day. They putting out hits, after hits, after hits. You know they, they with it. But it's like everybody want that. You know when somebody come in town, everybody want that. Yo, like, I wish I had it song with them. Like, well, you got the. Con yeah. I'm still, I'm still on the same. Like I'll be like, yo, when when Snoop was just here, I was like, yo, John, like. Man, I wish oh, you, I was. Are you on the for it? Man, I wish I was here for Snoop. Like yeah. I was like, boom. I ended up meeting Snoop in, in the next in the club the next day. Mm -hmm. Like seeing him in the club, DJ. But it's was like that at the Grand. Yep, at the Grand. Grand's beautiful, man. Yeah, Grand is clubs grand. immaculate. But it's like I don't know, bro. It's like the door is open for everybody in Boston. Everybody at Mass, like it's there. You just gotta. Yeah, but you understand, like. 
I, and I, again, I know you, it's like, yeah, I'm just going to sell with Doug, but like the first to really get a connect. Actually, I think Fast Coop has a song with Lil Baby or something. But the other Either f- Flyers got a song with Lil Baby. Yeah. Fast Coop got. Rich the Kid. Rich the Kid, or Rich Pablo. Mm-hmm. <coughs> That's like big for a lot of artists out here, bro. Yeah. So is that, is that tough for you sometimes? Like, as you were saying, like, since your your brother's in the position he's in, like, you don't want to seem like it's just all a handout. Mm, yeah, I would say it is tough. I'm not going to beat around the bush. It's tough. Mm-hmm. But I don't let that shit slow anything down that it's on my end. Like, And I'll vouch for, for this dude, Gun. Like, he is in the studio and working. It's not like yeah, he's just sure. humble I, dude, bro. It's not like he's just, like, spoiled as fuck. I, I, I got you, bro. <laughs> so, appreciate that but i i get the grind from my brothers like mm-hmm. if the way i see it is if if bro can get up every day at 9 a.m and take his ass to practice and do this and do that and do that to put food on the table for all these people under his belt how come i can't get my ass up and go in the studio and make music for people who going through something or feeling like how i'm feeling or doing this who need a connection mm-hmm. through music and make my own vibe and Help, like you know, what I'm saying, like yeah. make make the make the circle way bigger. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I feel like it's no excuse on my end. Like he going all out. I'm gonna go all out. I think like, wh- everybody's gonna go all out in whatever they got in front of them. Like whether it's whether it's uh, Jiggy on my little promotion side, he night and day. You the marketer? He, he not, night and let's day. Let's go, send, Jiggy. Night and day, sending sending all his little friends the songs. Night and day. Whoever come through the house, you gee, why you DM me video? then, bro? <laughs> you know, I'm on the biggest platform in the city, bro. And again, we shoot it on a ten thousand dollar camera, and nobody knows, bro. Night, night and day, though. So it's like you need to get in here. What? I can never tell what these dudes are saying. Um. So, uh, GMB says get more blessings. Yeah. Yo, what does GDP stand for? What? Golden Deer Productions. What's wrong with you, bro? Oh my fault. <laughs> um, so is GMB at this point like you guys? Do you know who Plaid Finesse? You met him yet? Who? He he's a he's an artist in the city. He What's his name? Name is Plaid Finesse. No, nah, never know. Yeah, so he his shit is Lucky Bands. Mm-hmm. So have you guys just built it? You think it's like a movement at this point, or is it just like if you know, if you're like blood related family, you're on GMB? Yeah, that's basically where it's at right now. It's your family. It's not like. It's not like we don't stop anybody from saying GMB. Like, but you're not you know really saying? GMB if you're not the blood. Yeah, but we don't, you know what I'm saying? It's it's all love. It, it, it's all love. So it's not. So there's people back in Cleveland that are repping GMB. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a lot. Word. But it's like, you know what I'm saying? I'm. It's getting to the point where it's it's like the music side. Like how uh, YSL Thug, Young Thug, you know what I'm saying? It's GMB Gunner. Mm-hmm. Like, not saying that it's connected or anything. What Gunner Man? Gunner man, make sure you keep the man in the gunner. That should bother you? Nah, not really. I don't have no problem with that shit. Yeah, I'm sure. Like, gunner is gunner. My music is way different. Uh, Yeah, absolutely. GMB gunner speaks for itself, so I don't don't even... Gunner man. They've been calling you that for a while, gunner man? Yeah, I've been called that for about three years, four years now. As soon as you touched out here? Basically. Word. Probably a little bit before that, but yeah, as soon as that happened. But yes, I don't know. I have no problem with that. Everybody always asks me about that. Like, what you think about Gunner? I'm like, his music. But you dope. do. But you do say, don't forget the man and the Gunner man. Yeah, for sure. I say that. Just at times, you know, it just be times when you know when somebody is somebody will bring that situation up. Like, man, what you think about Gunner? Like, well, y'all got the same name. I'm like, don't forget the man and the Gunner. Like, <laughs> don't forget it. That's that's mine. That's, that's my niche. Um. So. <laughs> Let me just think. I think they're gonna kick me out of here soon. I'm sorry to run this one on the shorter end. We we're gonna always do number two as well. We do number two, three, four. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I don't think I'm leaving the studio anytime soon. I could be, so. be a co-host. You know, we can oh yeah, we get definitely right. We we'll get jiggy up. Put you tell us your a, marketing tactics. Put them in a hot seat. <laughs> um. Okay. So, do you guys know how we start and end these shows? I'll no. tell. I'll tell you. So, we. <coughs> you say hi. Your name. And this is my golden hour. Directly after, wait, no break. Directly after you say hi, your name. And that was my golden hour. No break in between both of them. Does that make sense? And this is your one shot, bro. 
Put your fucking sauce on it, dog. <clears throat> What's up, y'all? How y'all doing? This is GMB Gunner Man, and this is my golden hour. Bang. Perfect. Smack. What's number two, though? <laughs> Bro, you say that was. This, this was my golden hour, and that was my golden hour. That was? Yeah, so this it's just a start hour. and the end. All right, so say it one more time. <laughs> okay, so, hi. Hi. Your name. Jiggy, you can come up here and do it when, when he says it, if you'd like. <laughs> Hi, your name, mm-hmm. and this is my golden hour. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna cut that and put that at the start. Bet. And then hi. Oh, I, okay. Your I'm name, doing too and well. that was Bet. my golden hour. What's up, y'all? How y'all doing? This GMB Gunner Man, and this is my golden hour. Bang! You're a great guy, all the way from Cleveland. And what's up, y'all? How y'all doing? GMB Gunner Man. Nah, I ain't gonna say how y'all doing. <laughs> cut. We'll try again, bro. Everyone fucks it up. Y'all know what it is, GMB Gunner, man. That was my golden hour with my man, Connor. You're a great guy, man.